Cunoașteți vecinii ca pe tine însuți, așa am putea parafraza un vechi îndemn. Regiunea geografică în care ne aflăm este cel mai greu încercată de războiul pe care rușii l-au început în Ucraina. Dar o astfel de situație trebuie exploatată la maximum de statele care au aceleași valori și de multe ori aceleași probleme. Este deci momentul perfect să facem proiecte comune cu vecinii, mai ales că planurile nu sunt atât de greu de pus în practică. Radko Vlaico, ambasadorul Bulgariei la București, ne-a invitat să trecem împreună frontiera prin punctul Giurgiu Ruse, să observăm o problemă comună pe care o au țările noastre, dar și să discutăm despre soluții. Sunt Cristina Cileacu, începe Pașaport Diplomatic. de vară în punctul de trecere al frontierei româno-bulgare dintre Giurgiu și Ruse. Coada de camioane care așteaptă să fie vămuite se întinde pe câțiva kilometri și ocupă practic o bandă de circulație. Dacă șoferii de profesie trebuie să aștepte resemnații la rând, cei norocoși, conducătorii de autoturisme, trec repede spre vamă și, din fericire, nu așteaptă prea mult. Azi. Din punct de vedere al atribuțiilor Poliției de Frontieră Române, m-am spus că deja s-au luat toate măsurile care erau în competența instituției noastre, astfel încât în măsura posibilităților, pentru că există și acest număr foarte mare de turiști pe timpul verii, dar sunt prioritar, bineînțeles, și șoferii de autocamioane. Sunt suplimentate ATR, sunt ardere dedicate pentru ei și că colegii noștri, colegii mei români, împreună cu omologii bulgari, efectuează controlul în comun, ceea ce înseamnă o singură oprire pentru, pentru șoferul de autocamion, inclusiv pentru turist, astfel încât încercăm să scurtăm cât mai mult timpul de așteptare în punctul de frontieră. Aceeași vamă, altă zi de vară și un accident nefericit care blochează accesul. De data aceasta, toată lumea este oprită și nimeni nu poate să estimeze cât va dura. Acest timp se calculează în ore din viață pierdute în așteptare, fără termen limită. Iar acest preț este plătit de fiecare persoană care trece prin punctul de frontieră Giurgiu Ruse. Frontiera e foarte lungă, 610 km. Punctele sunt 8 și încă două care sunt locale. Asta înseamnă 10. Nu ajunge. Trebuie să fie, trebuie să fie mai mult. Punctul Rusie Giurgiu este cel, punctul cel mai mare de, de toate. Și, ce, și trafic este cel mai mare. Trafic pentru autoturisme și trafic pentru camioane. Oricât de cinic poate să sune, războiul început de ruși în Ucraina nu face decât să apropie țările care erau aliate deja. În cazul vecinilor, problemele pe care le provoacă războiul devin comune și ca atare și rezolvările găsite tot împreună sunt mai eficiente. Am trecut împreună cu ambasadorul Bulgariei la București prin Vama Giurgiu Ruse. Am văzut situația de pe teren, veche de altfel, și am discutat despre soluții care pot îmbunătăți traficul, dar mai mult... Ne ajută să ne cunoaștem mai bine vecinii. Așa am aflat de pildă că este un feribot funcțional care poate traversa Dunărea din momentul în care partea română semnează partea ei de acord, dar și că sunt discuții despre construirea unui pod în plus între noi și Bulgaria. Radko Vlaico, ambassador of Bulgaria in Romania, welcome to Diplomatic Passport, a special edition film din Ruse in Bulgaria. Thank you so much for uh, the invitation. Ambassador, we come to Ruse with a purpose because we wanted to see a common problem that our countries have, uh, especially the uh, crossing border, uh, the traffic at the uh, crossing border Giurgiu Ruse. This, as I said, is a common problem for our countries. Um, And besides that, we, we only have two bridges. One is uh, the uh, Podul Prieteniei, Friendship Bridge, and the other one is Calafat Vidin. Is it enough for two countries that actually entered together in 2007 in the European Union? First of all, I fully agree, and uh, it's not normal on distance of 400 kilometers of Danube, region, uh, uh, Danube River to EU 
and NATO members to have just two bridges. The first one you mentioned is 70 years old. It was built in other situation. It was built because of the Soviet interest to, to come through Romania to Bulgaria in case that something could happen. The second one, it was built in 2013, but we started negotiations for it uh, 96, 97 during the war in uh, former Yugoslavia. And it was the, the, the sense of this bridge in this time was to overcome somehow the problems in former Yugoslavia. Now we are in similar situation. We have the war in Ukraine. That's why for us it's very important for us, I have in mind not just Romania and Bulgaria, but I have in mind NATO and EU. It's very important to have one strategic new bridge for uh, uh, railways, for uh, other transport. This is so important now and I hope that the politicians, they understand very well the importance of this project and they are working hard on this. I hope that we will find the understanding of uh, this uh, big uh, Bulgaria work on this. We met in uh, Romania already, already understanding on this and I hope this will be finished uh, very soon. Uh, I want to say also that uh, this is important not just because of strategic issues like the war, etc. It's very important for the business first and second for the tourists. We were together with you now on the checkpoint and you saw the situation. The people on the border, they have to keep balance between the business, the trucks, and between the normal people going for tourism. In Rome to Romania or to Bulgaria, to Greece, Turkey, etc. This is very, uh, very difficult how to keep this balance and everybody to be uh, satisfied. From last year, exactly one year, one year, two, three months, when the war in Ukraine started, the increasing of the trucks, of the traffic of the trucks, is more than 30 percent. You can imagine, before the war, it was a delicate, difficult situation, and now we have 30 percent more trucks. The people, I'm so happy that the tourists, the Romanian tourists are on the first place among foreign tourists in Bulgaria. More, a lot of them, they are going to Greece and Turkey. Bulgarian tourists are on first place among the foreign tourists in Romania. And you understand that they, they want to, uh, to go, to travel, to communicate. I think that, concrete speaking about here, about uh, Rusa Giorgio, uh, it's very important also, very fast, I would say, in these days, uh, to, to have again the ferry because this ferry can cover 25% of the traffic of the trucks. And we can come with 25% less trucks on the bridge, we can come to the situation before the war. This is very important, and I count that uh, our Romanian friends and colleagues and partners, they'll make the best to have this ferry as soon as possible. Uh, well, usually when it comes to Romanian-Bulgarian uh, infrastructure cooperation, our side, side always says it's because of Bulgaria that we don't solve the problem. I can only imagine on the Bulgarian side is the same uh, uh, situation. Uh, overall this, with the war at uh, our borders, as you said, uh, European Commission actually supports our country to build at least one new bridge because we only have two bridges and looks like the Danube divide us instead of uniting us. Absolutely. Now that Bulgaria has a new government, uh, we also have, uh, let's say, stability in Romania from the political point of view, that something will actually move. Uh, first of all, allow me to say that the uh, European Commission, NATO, uh, our allies and partners, they fully support the connectivity Bulga between Bulgaria and Romania. And this one, this one bridge, new bridge between Russia and Georgia, is just one of the possible bridges in the future. But let's, uh, let's focus on this one, because it's really very important from different reasons. Uh, we started the negotiations, I'm one year and uh, four months, five months ambassador to Romania and all the time I'm working very hard with Bulgarian authorities and with Romanian authorities on this issue. In the beginning the idea was to work on five bridges, what is, uh, what is in this moment probably not so realistic to work in one and same time for all five. We can be focused on one and one when we time. start, uh, when we sign the agreement we will work uh, on other four. 
I, w I would say that uh, the, the new Romanian government after the rotation in the Romanian government and the new Bulgarian uh, government after the elections of, uh, on the 2nd of April, they were elected in one and same period with frame of 5-10 uh, days. Uh, what was very, very interesting that there are practically new governments in both countries. The political will exists in general. The first uh, visit abroad of our Prime Minister, excluding, of course, uh, the, the summit in Vilnius and uh, the meetings in Brussels, the bilateral, first bilateral visit was to Romania. I can tell something which is for me very important, and I, as Ambassador, I'm very, very satisfied on this. The Minister of Environment, on the second day when new Romanian uh, minister was elected and one week after electing a Bulgarian uh, environment minister they, they, started, they, they started to be on telephone call and immediately started to, uh, to, to work together on the problems coming from this new Kachovka and the dangers for the situation in Black Sea for the water, air and so on. It was an excellent example of cooperation of these uh, both ministers, how to manage, and now we have every day change of data between the experts of, in Bulgaria, 12 points in Bulgaria for air and water, and 12 points in Romania, air and water, they change, and so we have the view on very big territory on the Black Sea, how is the real situation, because this is what the people living there, and also important for the tourism, both in Romania and Bulgaria. We, continue now to work to change information, positions to have common uh, positions uh, on Schengen. And this is very important. And I, I would say here, excellent relations immediately established between ministers of foreign affairs. Both ladies, they know uh, from, Brussels. from Brussels, they work yes. uh, together uh, in Brussels. Something more what's also very concrete and uh, important. Ministers well. of energy. I'm very, very satisfied how our relations in the energy, because they are big projects and so on. But in general speaking, the connectivity between us is very important. I understand the governments are new, let's say. Uh, in our case, it's just a, a rotation. In your case, it's a more complicated issue, but at least you have a government. But do concrete steps will be taken because I think both of our uh, population, uh, uh, both our people are sick and tired of hearing that we have excellent relations with everyone uh, till we cross the border and we find out we have to wait for hours. You are absolutely uh, right, but I can tell you that I see one new political spirit in our relations. This is not just words, this is something very concrete. A lot of ministers here in Romania and in Bulgaria, they are technocrats, they are not politicians. They understand the sense of concrete work and of concrete agreements. That's why I am, uh, I would say, a, real, a realistic optimist that these technocrats, uh, ministers, they will do their job on the best way and together with uh, the experts, together with uh, the diplomacy of both uh, countries, our efforts they are also very uh, important. I'll mention here Ambassador Brandusa Peredescu, my colleague, uh, Romanian Ambassador to Sofia, who are pushing our governments, both in Bulgaria and Romania, really to be realized all these concrete steps. Fully agree with you that the people, they want something concrete and not just political declaration. But as I mentioned, we have a, some kind of new political spirit, which is concrete with uh, all these uh, efforts to be uh, concrete. And I'm sure that uh, speaking about uh, borders, uh, we'll see movement. Of course, I see here uh, the best solution is of course Schengen, both countries to be in Schengen. Let's hope that in frame of a uh, few weeks from now when uh, your uh, uh, program is recorded, in few weeks the, the, the issue has to be solved. Second, we have to work really about this connectivity. And speaking okay. about Russia, Georgia, this ferry, this is not so, di not so difficult issue, yeah. this is not so complicated issue. The ferry is ready to work. It's just one sign and who is not signing? Uh, we have agreement from 19, uh, 29th of April last year. It was signed agreement for this ferry. Just one sign in your government to, to, let, to, it to, to let it to work. At some point, uh, your Minister of Interior had a declaration saying that uh, he believes that our countries will be in Schengen in October this year. We are filming this interview in August and recently the Minister of Interior from Austria said that no way uh, does uh, this will become reality. 
How is the feeling in Bulgaria? Because in Romania it was a big disappointment at the level of the people for not being allowed to become a member of Schengen. How is the situation here? Uh, speaking about Austria, I can uh, tell you that uh, the political life now is very dynamic. And all these statements, declarations, they can be changed very fast. What have I in, in, uh, in mind? I have in mind that we have a lot of efforts, Romania with Austria, Bulgaria with Austria, on bilateral basis also, to convince really Austria that the problem which is uh, for them difficult, migrants, etc. This is not problem with Bulgaria and Romania. This is problem for other, with other sources for these migrants and so on. That's why I hope and I strongly believe that all these political efforts, the position of European Commission, the position of European Parliament, finally they will have some influence on the position of, of Austria. That's why I I'm also disappointed of this position of Austria, but in the same time, I'm expecting some change. I think that the, the objections of Netherlands, they will be already... Uh, solved? Uh, yes, solved, because uh, these walls which our parliament has to adopt, they are already adopted. And I, I hope, also with my Romanian partners and colleagues, with Bulgarian uh, colleagues and politicians, we hope that it's realistic during the Spanish presidency, and that means uh, having in mind when the councils are, in the end of October, to be taken a positive uh, government. Speaking about the disappointment of the people, yes, I fully agree with this. This is disappointment of normal people, this is disappointment of the politicians, because the politicians, they, they don't have... Uh, they, they don't have the result which is normal to have. The, countries like uh, Austria or Netherlands to recognize our success like countries. Romania and Bulgaria will fulfill the technical requirements for uh, Schengen, both countries, in 2011. After that, everything is political decision to us. This is not fair. This is not fair because both Romania and Bulgaria were so loyal partners. Speaking about the EU, NATO is also, but it is another uh, uh, another question. Speaking about EU, about uh, Schengen, we are so loyal partners. And to have such a relation, this is something which is, I would not say, fair. Well, Ambassador, speaking of Russia, uh, Bulgaria has its uh, part of citizens that are uh, pro Russian. It's uh, the common history you had. Uh, then again, your president is rather pro-Russian, but on the other side, we had the governments, and not only the current, the previous government as well, that actually supported Ukraine. Which is the line of the country now uh, regarding the war in Ukraine? Because as you said, indeed, there is this crux uh, starting to, uh, to appear at the level of the European Union and NATO members that maybe we are not supposed to help Ukraine as much. Uh, speaking about this, if the pro-Russian people in Bulgaria are more than the pro-Euro-Atlantic people, I'll give you one very simple example. After the start of the war in Ukraine, we had three times parliamentary elections. In all these three parliamentary elections, the result was one and same. We had, and we have now in the parliament and in the government, very strong Euro-Atlantic majority, constitutional majority. That means that the Bulgarian society prefer, prefers to have Euro-Atlantic politicians than pro-Russian politicians. This is very important to say, and we are seeing this with the results uh, in the elections. But the, the most important, the, the line which is following, this is really our uh, to be strong members of NATO and EU and speaking about Ukraine to give our full support like our partners and allies in NATO and we are doing now this very uh, very consequent very concrete and we have to be united in the war against their Russian hybrid war and the people there to understand what's the real situation what is the truth and this is Speaking about pro-Russian orientation in Bulgaria, this is not so as you can see very often. If the Bulgarian people are pro-Russian oriented, it will be not majority of 75% in the parliament. 
speaking of, uh, of the Black Sea, because uh, you mentioned uh, the, the joint uh, cooperation at bilateral and also NATO level, uh, in case of Romania, we already uh, have some uh, bombs uh, falling uh, not far away from Tulcea. Um, uh, Ismail is uh, an area quite close to Romania, and it was uh, under Russian attack. Um, you expect in uh, the same kind of reactions from uh, Russian side in case of uh, Bulgarian uh, Black Sea uh, seashore? Thanks God, they were not died people. There were no consequences on Romanian territory, uh, territory, with exception of one boat and so. But let's say here uh, the geography is so that you are really very close. Yes. We are on Far the Black Sea. We are true Romania yeah. to, to Russia. That's why Romania somehow is between us on first line. I hope, I hope that all the um, efforts from NATO countries here in Black Sea uh, and also uh, all the measures which were, were taken, they will not allow the Russians to, to play their game in the Black Sea. Romania and Bulgaria will do our best for this Ukrainian grain to go through, uh, through the, the sea or through the, our territories and to be exported to, to these countries. Uh, our concern is big because Black Sea, not just because Romania and Bulgaria were in the Black Sea, but Black Sea's tradition is such area and such a region which could be very dangerous for whole Europe and for the whole world. Atât pentru astăzi, dar rămânem în continuare online pe pagina de Facebook a emisiunii și pe contul nostru de Twitter. Revenim cu subiecte noi din lumea diplomației și a politicii externe, vinerea viitoare de la 11.30 și reloare sâmbăta după miezul nopții. La revedere!